The Laboral Uskadi team trying out Guy Rilini's bike before the stage, which means we must be heading towards the mountains from Huesca to Haka. We have a long 16k shallow climb in the middle of the stage as a warm up for a steep finish to Haka, about 3.7k's, 8.5%. Demi Vollering, well, she actually wasn't the favorite of the stage, which was just a madness, but, you know, people do silly things sometimes. They go white water rafting, flip over and eat it. Uh, that person does get out of the kayak or whatever. I would never get in one of those things. You couldn't pay me enough. Um, but this is a pretty sick bridge. I, I thought this was quite, quite attractive, actually. Anyway, they are coming up to the mountains. No uh, breakaway formed lured Oyar Bide for the Labra Kucha Uskadi uh, team went clear and started the climb first. You can see it's not the steepest climb, it's just long, 18.5 k's, it's up and down, uh, some descent sections in there, some steeper bits, and FDJ Suez, they took it upon themselves to make this climb as hard as possible for their GC leader, Evita Muzic. They've got Liege based on Liege winner, Grace Brown, uh, who will pace, I think, the last part of the climb. So SD Works don't actually have to do anything or control the stage. Uh, they just sit in with Bredevold, who makes it over, Vollering, Royster, I think, made it over not too far away. Near the top, though, attacks came from, I think, Antonio Niedermeyer, the talented German on Canyon Schramm, but that got brought back again. SD Works didn't really have to do anything. There was one attack from maybe Roy Ackers near the top as they go over uh, the monastery. It looks like it's had a modern Reno, uh, that monastery. There's another one further down the mountain. Technical twisty descent, though. They've got the crash barriers already up in those corners, and we see Gaia Riolini in the ditch, looking very, very hurt. Her bike about five meters down the road. There's some rocks there. Looks like she's gone down hard. It wasn't a corner, so it looks like she went off the road before the corner, in fact. And then as she's getting up, she basically collapses again into the side of the road. Brody's gone past her and is checking if she's okay or, or what's going on because she's their GC leader, or at least co-leader with Longer Borghini. And then the next frame, we see her getting the bike which is crazy again. Then there's a second, the old monastery of San Juan de la Peña, which also looks pretty cool, carved in the mountain. Volring's like, enough of this madness. Mr. Bredevold, please get on the front and get us down this mountain in one position one and two safely because you can end your GC on descents. We've seen that in, you know, in Basque Country with about four of the GC leaders crashing out and Chapman trying to marshal a, a very dazed guy, Rialini, who'd lose about six minutes today. This is the, the, the head of the race. Voss there. That descent caused more damage or splits than the climb itself, but everyone's present and correct. It should be there. Vollering, Labu, Noviodoma, Longa Borghini, I think Castellan as well. Bredevold goes on the front to keep a tempo, and then something very strange happens. Group comes back. Bredevold attacks. Bear in mind, we're going towards a 10, 12 minute climb where Vollering should be the favorite. She's the best climber in the world, was so much better than everybody else last year. And then SD works like, let's create, make it a bit more complicated than it should be. Let's start jumping. And then other teams get involved. And suddenly a group goes up the road that isn't really the best for them. With Castelline, who comes second in this stage. Nuvia Doma, who came second or third in the tour last year. But she's not on the best form here. But Nip Fisher Black's there. And I was thinking, are SD works really happy with with this group composition? I guess I, we never found out because Nuvia Doma refuses to pull and that shuts down the group. Castelline was all invested. I don't know, A, what SD Works are doing, B, why Nivea Doma didn't pull. Maybe she knew she wouldn't be good and she just wanted to, she was there to mark for bound find. Svinkles anticipates before the climb, but in the end, it all works out fine for SD Works because Vollering enters in good position, no breakaway. Giganti, who on Wollonga Hill did a very, very good performance, although it looks like she's crashed with blood coming out of her knee, her left knee on the stage. Roy Akers increases the pace on the 3.4k, 8% climb through the hairpins. She's got Yara Castellan, who won that Tour de France stage last year, but the camera changes. And Demi Vollering, she doesn't care. She does not care care who's in the group how many of you are there whether her teammates have set a pace for her they didn't she's just gonna pace now this didn't work on the murder we uh, people are forgetting this ain't the murder we this is a longer climb and on the longer climbs look at her, her data on the end of the tourmalay last year when she actually attacked even though Kopecky didn't pull for her or no one set a pace for her 
It was ridiculous. The difference between her and everybody else, the, the next best riders, was huge. She looks back suddenly, oh, I've actually got three riders left with me with 1K to go. Longer Borghini's looking down at her stem. She's just accelerated out of that hairpin. So I just need everybody to wake up! Wake up! Ardennes is over. Okay, she hasn't won a race until May. Is that her fault? Maybe. Uh, is it her team's fault? Also, yeah, definitely. But she's the best climber in the world. And you see the Tour de France Femme avec Zwift parkour they got this year. If Ollering turns up in good form, she can win by five minutes. The Alpe d'Huez stage, she's she going to cook everybody, or she should at least. Uh, but we'll see what climbing support she gets at the Tour de France Femme. But here, in the last 800 meters, she opens up the taps and really lets loose, gaining a huge amount of time uh, over Longa Borghini and Castellan. Smiling over the finish, Vollering's back, wins the stage, should win GC pretty comfortably. Castelline, after sitting on Longa Borghini, comes second. Great performance from her uphill. Longa Borghini, valiant, but the climb was a bit too long for her. Then Music, Giganti, Bounfine, Marcus Lebu, Kadzau, and Roy Akers. Here's what Volering had to say after the stage. You tried uh, very hard this season, and finally you got it. How does it feel? Is it a relief for you? Yeah, I mean, I felt already really strong this season, but it was not, not yet there. I mean, I had some podiums, but uh, the win, uh, yeah, it, it, it uh, took long for me this year for my feeling, but I'm really happy that, uh, that I could do, do it here. And um, yeah, I mean, last year I had this beautiful jersey already, but I was wearing the UCI jersey, so I never, I had so many wins yet last year, but never in this pretty jersey. And uh, that was my goal of this season to win at least uh, a few times in this jersey before uh, the Dutch Championships again, so I'm really happy that now at least I have a nice finished photo in this jersey. <laughs> now we are in the fifth stage and now you got the victory and also the leadership. Uh, what does it mean this uh, for the rest of the world for you and the team? Yeah, it's sad that, uh, that this jersey get, uh, now <laughs> again uh, will be in another jersey, but no, this, uh, this red jersey, the leader's jersey is uh, of course uh, a really pretty one and uh, I hope I can keep it till the very end. Regarding today's stage, uh, was this the plan for you and the team uh, to start a bit uh, more control race and then go in the last kilometers? Uh, not exactly this way, but um, yeah, I just started the pace and actually I felt uh, really, really good. And then uh, yeah, I just uh, tried to keep uh, going and because I felt at least I was also struggling a little bit in my wheels. So then I was like, okay, then I just try to to give it my very, very all till the very end. and. Uh, I hope I can uh, get already some time on her and uh, yeah, that worked out so that's really nice and uh, yeah, hopefully a few more nice days coming for our team. In terms of GC, Volering takes a big lead, 31 seconds over Longa Borghini. Marcus actually in third after doing well on the climb and the TTT from Visma Lisa bike was solid. Uh, same time as Little Trek. So she's right in there, but we've got more climbs to come. Can anyone contest or compete with Demi Volering? I doubt it.